Pussy Gloves here, and this is the first FL Studios with hardware, outboard gear. I don't know, I'll come up with a better name later, but it's the first one in this series. And in this series, I'm just going to talk about things like MIDI routing, using external gear with FL, um, things like that, if I have it. I honestly don't own very much outboard gear, so it's not that big of a problem. But I'll probably talk about things like different types of chords and stuff that would be important to you as a producer. But this first one is actually here by request, and it is one that I sorely felt when I was first starting and was highly confused from the lack of information or just the amount of troubleshooting I had to do. And it is using the MK2, the machine MK2 controller with FL Studios. And it is it can be a fabulous tool and honestly one of the greatest MIDI controllers, but you just... It could just be so overwhelming trying to get things set up, especially with performance mode and things. Now, I'm not going to be talking about performance mode in here. What I'm going to show you is how to use it as a MIDI controller and as a plugin and how to switch between the modes and control different settings and even set up your own personal layout with the controller, as well as how to control knobs um, in any plugin, including third party stuff. So we're going to get into it. So uh, right off the bat. You have to have your MK2 controller set up. You should have it plugged into your computer. I realize I don't have a picture of it in front of you, but you really don't need it. It's just going to be a distraction and it will take up screen space. Plus, I don't have a camera that's not super annoying to uh, shoot with. I'd have to use my phone and I'd, it just it's a whole other process in post. So I'm not going to do that. It's not necessary. So make sure you have your MK2 controller registered to you. You have the software installed. Um, you should have on your desktop the machine... As you can see where my mouse is, the machine uh, software as a DAW available to you because, you know, you bought machine. It's pretty hard to, to steal a machine now that I think about it, so I shouldn't be too worried about that. And it should be working. And so when you boot it up NFL, and make sure, oh, this one's a big one because this one got me for the longest time. Make sure you've got the latest in the service center for native instruments. Make sure you've got the latest driver installed because if you don't, it may not even pop up in your... Uh, MIDI options in your DAW, which could be just so man that that just stinks. So it took me a while to figure that one out. But we have here we have our settings, uh, and if you don't know how to get to these things, um, then you're obviously not very versed in FL Studio. So go watch my how to make your first song in FL Studios. It will it will school you on all this stuff. So you come to your MIDI settings, and we've got the machine MK2, and just make sure that's enabled. Don't worry about the port and stuff. Not too important. Now, uh, what's cool about this is you can hit, so on your controller, on the bottom part, you should have, depending on the controller you have, this should work for all controllers, you have a shift, and you hold down that, and you press control, and above your control button, it should actually say MIDI, and when you do that, your button should switch on and off on your controller. Um, one is waiting for the plugin, so if we go to our plugin here, and if you need to load up your plugin in FL, make sure you have your machine. Make sure you have your machine to plugin all set up. And let's, uh, so now it will respond as if we had the machine DAW itself open. So that's really cool. It'll take all the same signals and everything, and it will not respond to any other MIDI channel, just the machine DAW. I have not experimented with having multiple machines open, but I'm sure that could be interesting. And you can move around your stuff that way. Uh, and uh, it should have all your sounds and everything. Make sure you're in the in the native instruments library. This is user, the user section. It's a whole nother thing. This has to do with machine though, which is a whole nother DAW. We're talking about FL Studios right now. So anyways, that's how you do it in here. And if there's one DAW that requires knowledge of keyboard shortcuts, man, it's machine because everything works around the controller. Um, but you you technically could use it without the controller. Then if you hold down shift control, it'll bang. It's now in MIDI mode and it will respond to the channel you're on. So by the default template, at least the one I had, was each uh, a set of pads is your keyboard chromatically. And all the group sections are, you know, the A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever it is. You can go through those to get your octave. So the very first group, group A, is the low octave. This is group B, C, D. And that's really cool. So 
what the heck, why is it set up like that? Well, if you also installed it, you should have the controller editor available to you. And it should look like this. Native Instruments Controller Editor. You, you may have not have even known that this existed. So what this allows you to do is set up a personalized machine setup with FL Studios. And it's super mega cool. You can get all customizable. And all of a sudden, all the extra buttons you have, you can now customize and assign to your setup. Now, I haven't experimented very much with... Um, you can save templates, but I haven't experimented with linking things to knobs and then saving the project file and opening them back up. I'm not sure if the knobs will stay linked. I assume they would, but I could see things going horribly wrong too. So I'm not going to make any definitive statements there. But if you have experience with that, then drop it in the comments. Let other people know if it works or doesn't work. Um, but I'm just going to go over the basics of this editor because it is a really in-depth editor. So you have your templates here. So you can actually make different templates. And while you're in FO Studios you can shift between these templates and that could be really cool for reasons I'm going to show you later. But, and just as, just really quick, if we go to our FL studios, we have machine open. And if we hold down shift control, we'll switch back to machine mode and you can see I am controlling this with machine. And then I, let's say I do whatever I want to do. Maybe I'm doing something live or just sequencing something in here and using machine to create sequences in it. And then route it to FL is like a whole nother subject. But uh, let's say I've done whatever I want to do and I want to switch back to MIDI mode. Well, you can do that without ever even leaving the project. And that is just too cool. You'll also notice that when we turn a knob that hasn't been assigned, we get a little question mark up here from FL Studio saying like, what the crap are you doing with that knob? Like, why are you, what is that? And it's kind of wondering what it is. Well, you can assign that here to what they do. So I'm going to cover some basics real fast. If you click a button, it'll take you to the key you just pushed. And I'm gonna go up an octave or two. So you see I just switched to group D, you can see that over here, group D, and I have all my stuff going. And if I go to uh, my pages, this is something we're really not gonna delve into too much, but pages allows you to do some really cool things. And then you have your assignments. This is where most of what you wanna do is gonna be. Um, so, on your templates, right now, all of our notes, if you click on a note, or, or you could simply just literally click on the note, uh, you will see that uh, what the note has been assigned to do. So we see what color it is. You could change the color to be something else. Maybe you want your bottom row to be dark blue or blue or whatever, and you can do that. My mistake. What this does, uh, the pad page D, this changes the pad color. So if you look at your D, it should have changed colors. Now, if you want to change the C color, you got to come down here for uh, the LED. And it has specific cases where the LED changes color and you can actually change all these settings and stuff. It's really cool. Let's say you want it to be blue or purple or whatever, and boom, it just turned purple. So that's one option you have available to you. And then this is the most important part. When you hit the note, what happens? And so you could change the type. Maybe you want it to pitch bend or oh, this is where the program changes where, but I still feel ripped off because you have to do it in this instead of NFL without an external controller. So I don't know, there's gotta be a way. And then uh, you have all these other options. You can initialize song position, wherever that's at, continue, stop, play, start, you know. There are actually FL templates people have out there, um, but you'd probably be better off just making your own. I'll probably release one at some point. And then we have our pressure. What happens? What are the note ranges? Stuff like that. And you can assign these things. And then these guys, these are control change. You generally want to leave these where they are because now you can assign them as free buttons essentially in FL Studios. So, uh, and you can get way more complicated, but that's like the basics of what's going on here. So if we come in our FL Studios now and we've got our MIDI controller set up. Oh, really quick. So let's say um, all this is just chromatic right now. And I, I don't want chromatic all the time when I'm playing notes. Sometimes I want to go into major scales or minor scales or whatever. And there's various ways of controlling this um, via the plugin themselves and just automating parameters for scale settings. Or you could just come in here and custom make. And one of the groups I, I made as a major scale. Boom, 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 boom. I didn't finish it. I just made one, just group D as a major scale. And so I can switch by holding down shift and pushing back and forth to switch between templates. So if I'm on group D, I can switch to the major scale so that if I'm playing a synthesizer, let's say I'm playing like a harmless, which will be loud and mm -hmm. 
I could play around in the major scale and it's a lot better than if I were to hold down shift, go back to the original template and it could be a bit more confusing with all the extra keys, especially if you're not classically trained and don't know what any of that stuff does, then you should go watch my music theory tutorial series. All right, so this is so that's what all this is. I'm gonna keep it on the template one since that's probably the template you're working on right now. All right, so now we're gonna look at how to link controllers in FO Studios to your controller so that when you turn a knob, that knob turns to you. But there's one other quick thing you need to know about this controller setup. If you hold down shift on your controller, you'll see a screen pop up. It will say display monitor settings, knobs, pads, page, template. You wanna go to knobs. So this will show you the knobs you have available to you. If you don't have it on knobs, you'll be moving settings uh, probably accidentally and you'll change brightness settings, which is another thing. If you hold down shift and you go to uh, settings, you can change the brightness of the screens and all sorts of nifty stuff. So we're gonna go to knobs. And so we have our knobs available to us. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to have, we have this up here, we have this multi-link to controller option. Okay, and so what this allows you to do is when you have this on, you can uh, move a button anywhere. This will work for native plugins. It gets a little complicated with third-party stuff if you don't if you don't know. But uh, you move a button, and you'll see it. All of a sudden, it's uh, just indicated to us that it's ready to receive a signal from somewhere else to tell it how to behave. And this can work with internal plugins. Like you could connect this to a MIDI out plug-in if you so desire to connect it to the knobs there or you could just turn the knob on your controller and bang you are in business and you could set the velocity sensitivity if uh if that's annoying you in the in the controller editor which is a great feature so um now that's really great and dandy and we could do that again let's say we want to move the uh the frequency so we move that we move our second knob and bang it's in business too you can even go in here and you can actually label them like we could name this oh no you know what i did have experience where i had to save a setup and it worked out okay for me from what i remember i never had to like re go in here and change stuff but i think i saved the template separate i can't remember but it totally worked so there's a way to do it and this is our pluck so you could rename it pluck and now on your controller if you have screens on yours, it will actually say pluck. And that's really cool. And it's controlling the pluck. Now, let's say you're dealing with something a little less friendly. You're dealing with party stuff. Well, here's how you do it. So first, let's go in and, uh, by the way, check out my series on contact. If you haven't yet, it's totally worth watching. And we want to control our epic choir. But we we first, let's talk about the front menu. You can just right-click learn MIDI CC automation. And turn it off, it won't work. And if you had this running in standalone mode, it would totally work, but it won't work. So what do you do? Well, you use the same method. You click up here, you move the knob, you see it has just communicated some information to FL saying, hey, this is ready to receive information. You move your knob and bang, you are now, you are now automating that. How cool is that? Now, let's say you want to control something a little more difficult. You want to control something in the editing options and you are having the worst time of your life. It's just not working. And so what do you need to do to make it happen? Maybe you've got an effect in uh, here. Maybe ooh, you have this chorus effect. You really want to automate it and you don't know scripting very good. So you can't get your chorus effect on the, on the performance mode. Well, here is what you do. First, go watch my contact series. Just kidding. Here's what you do. You uh, you need to assign this knob to a parameter. So if you wanted to automate these things regular like, you would go into up here on the wrapper setting. You'd go to browse parameters and bang. You'd have all these parameters and then you would just move the knob and it would take you to the knob that you're moving. Except for we have a problem. This knob has not been assigned a slot in here. So you're... Uh, so your machine controller will not recognize it. So what do you need to do? Well, any MIDI controller, I suppose. Well, what you need to do is you need to go in to the modules mode. Or let me see if this works. I've never tried this. Nope, it won't work. Okay, you need to go into the auto control. And this is where all your settings are to assign uh, MIDI things to. And this will vary from plugin to plugin. As in, some plugins might not have this option at all. So if you have one of those scenarios, you're stuck. But if we grab one, and move it, bang, we just assigned depth choir to MIDI controller CC35, which stands for continuous controller. And now 
if we go to uh, now FL Studios can see this now. So if we go to browse parameters now and we move depth choir, it's actually down there on number 35. So now we can click multi-link to controller, move it. We just saw it get, uh, communicated and we move this and bang. We are now moving stuff. And now uh, that's pretty much everything I can really think of that I wanted to do. Um, besides getting into ridiculous scenarios, I mean, if you have ridiculous scenarios, I guess I could try covering that too. But that is a pretty solid explanation of what to do. Besides the MIDI controller editor, there's like plenty more stuff we could talk about in here. But most of it's self-explanatory. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, of course, especially if you found this useful. And share this with machine users. Because I there are lots of videos that when I first got it, I was like, how the crap do you do this? And they were just confusing, man. Uh, some of them explained a lot of good stuff, but they didn't have it all. And I'm trying to put a video that has it all. So if you have found something that you're still trying to do, besides the fact that you've run into an error like, oh, it won't even like recognize my controller. Well, then you either got a problem with registry, serial usually, or you have not updated your driver. Those are like the three big ones. If you've still got a problem, that's really beyond me. But I mean, stuff you want to do in FL. So that should be that. As far as performance mode goes, you could pretty much figure it out now. If we were to open up another FL, which I'm not because I have Edison recording my voice right now, this, uh, these would essentially function as your pads in MIDI mode. And you could do a live performance by sending MIDI signals here. And you could set it up using your machine controller. I could do a video on that if you really want it. But uh, that's that. Once again, show this video with someone that you think would appreciate it because man this is valuable information at least it was to me and have a blessed day